Hello, hello, hello. It's a new day and welcome back to Migration Matters. We haven't done this in a very long time, but we are back to doing this because I just love um, learning about what is happening in migration or the issues. You know what I mean? Um, so we're back to it. I am DJ Kelly and let's get into migration matters and we'll be having a special a new episode of my migration matters uh every wednesday i believe let me check let me check <laughs> yes migration wednesday so every wednesday we're going to be sharing a new episode short to the point nothing too long you know but short with quick information that you can just get on the go to keep you updated and up to date with what is happening in migration and travel right so let's get to it today we're going to be sharing a story about a special um lady um and our stories come from iom that's international organization on migration and so <laughs> let me get this all set up <laughs> there we go so here we go now so the um it's the storyteller and we're just going to be going through and learning about this story of this person yeah awesome so the the here's a here's a headline i saw myself reflected and that's a quote sharing migrations Sorry, sharing migrants' experience through tele, tele, no, telenovela. <laughs> Bear with me um, as I go through this. So let's focus on the information. <laughs> Haitian migrant Jessica Valsin supported the filming of some scenes by the river that are based on real testimonies of people who have been sorry, who have had to cross rivers and survived. So this is that photo that you're looking on is Jessica. So this is Tijuana or Tijuana. And this was, this story was published on the 27th of June this year. So this month, a couple of days ago, Jessica, Jesse, Catherine, Beto, and, um, just say just have finished the day's activities at espacio migrante migrante a shelter that helps migrants in tijuana they are part of a team working on a creative project promoted by the institution known as migrant telenovela the project is developing a skit called teacher veterinarian astronaut telenovelas are famous in many central american countries including mexico this uh, presented an opportunity to leverage on and to leverage on and create a tool that would provide information on access to services such as education for their beneficiaries the idea to make this film was born from this the telenovela tells the story of Maleshka, a girl who dreams of studying and whose journey begins on the Suchiate River on the southern border of Mexico and Guatemala. The story of the telenovela is that of a very strong woman who leaves her country with her daughter and wants to go to a safe place, says Josiane Mukam. I'm almost sure I'm not pronouncing the names, names properly because I think if it's Haitian, I think it's Haitian, it's probably French. So please bear with me. So that's JM, a collaborator of Espacio Migrante as a leader of the African community in Tijuana. It is the life of the migrant woman, of the migrant, migrant girl who are in the struggle for the right to education in a foreign country. And that's her, isn't she gorgeous? She's beautiful. So that's Jessie, this is Jessie Valsin. That's her, she's gorgeous. 
The telenovela has the function of informing also to make visible the obstacles that children face in the education system, educational system. But at the same time, it presents a guide for migrants on access to information, which unfortunately is often what is most lacking, says Alberto Anaya, leader of the telenovela project. To build the script, the team held different workshops with families and children, and even with the organization's staff in order to hear their stories about the journey to get to Tijuana and the challenges they experienced along the way. We started doing workshops with the families and creating a script together with the, with the producers, explains Catherine Gijon, her name is on the screen, community organizer, each person told their story, creating a story with their own experiences, and we made a fusion of all of them. There are going to be many approaches in the story that both parents and children will recognize. Here's another set of photos that's um, for Alberto Anaya, project supporter. The Migrant Soap Opera Project aims at making the obstacles that migrant children have to overcome in order to enter the educational system in Mexico. That's a photo by IOM Mexico. Jesse Valsin, the leader of the Haitian community in Espacio Migrante, along with her sister Jessica, recalls some of their experiences. When you arrive in a city that is not yours, that is, that is different from your culture, where you have no one to support you, what it is like to sleep on the street, to turn to organizations, these are facts that you see in the telenovela. For Josiane, the telenovela is her own story. Since I arrived in Tijuana, I slept on the street, and in the telenovela, I played this part. The moment I did it, I embraced the part with all my heart because, it's, because it is my life. It was, it was a very strong scene because the character doesn't see the people she could talk to. It was difficult. Teaching the workshops, finishing the script and filming, to, and filming took more than six months and numerous sacrifices. In all that time, the organizers had to learn scripting, makeup and production. So this is Josiane Mukam, a migrant woman from Africa, tells how the film's main actress stars as a strong woman who struggled to give her daughter an education in a foreign country. Interesting story, wouldn't you say? Despite the difficulties for the Valsin sisters, the telenovela was a very special learning experience. The day we saw the river scene, I thought, it's huge. All the things the migrants have gone through to get here. If a person doesn't tell you, you're not going to know that. It's an accomplishment and a lesson that I'm going to take away because I didn't know that they had gone through all of that. It will be something I carry in my heart, says Jessica. It was fun to work and learn wardrobe and hairstyling. It was nice to see everyone with their own rhythm and personality living their characters in the play. Every time we left a place to see the achievement and that every part of the script is real, says Jesse, a psychology student who along with a psychology who, who along with her sister, a psychology student who along with her sister supports Haitians Asians by providing information on immigration, regularization, and teaching them Spanish. For Catherine, a young Honduran woman, it was also um, a very important learning experience. I began to love the project because I knew that what I was doing was a story that someone else had gone through. I saw myself reflected. It turns out that a part of me was there. In the end, I think we all, including the families, learn, learned something. Wow, isn't that a gorgeous photo of them? It's beautiful. Everyone points out that the telenovela is a gift from the migrant community to the migrant community itself. It's a gift for the future generations that will come to Tijuana. 
who are going to need access to education, says Catherine. Josiane, a Cameroonian migrant, shares the same sentiment. It's the gift we want to give. It's a gift with all our heart. Something that enriched the production of the telenovelas was the participation of the host communities. The work of volunteers in production helped shape the collection of stories. The achievement of this project is a collaborative, a collaborative effort from both migrants and the host community, something the team is very excited about. Currently, the telenovela is, the mo is, is in the post-production phase as the shelter looks for funding to cover the respective costs and have it ready in April or May 2023. The organization hopes that it will reach different cultural institutions, that it will be, that it will be disseminated in activities such as the Global Migration Film Festival of the International Organization for Migration, and that it will serve as an efficient informative channel with, with which people can learn more about possible scenarios of the migratory reality. Wow, and this story is by Juan Manuel Ramirez. Ramirez. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, it's, an, it's a beautiful story. What do you think about it? What are your thoughts? Leave, share, share your thoughts in the comments. Let us know what, you're think, what you think about this story. And please remember, if you like this video, click the like button. And if you really like it, and if you think it's a positive story, um, or share it, please, with those who you know. But um, I think, this is what I think. I think this is a beautiful initiative. You know what's interesting while I was reading it and going through it? What I was thinking about thinking about was whenever I thought of Mexico before, and this is no um, negative intention towards Mexico. It's just when you listen to the news, like I'm reading this story and I'm like, wow. When I listen to the news, I've never thought of Mexico in any other light than drug cartels. Yeah. I've, I've never thought about it in any other light because when I listen to the news, that's mostly what I'm hearing or either drug cartels or they're trying to go across the border. But I'm reading this story and I'm like, this is also the untold stories because you see a lot of times when we hear reports on different countries because it's quote unquote news, right? It's news they're reporting. So they're reporting what um, whatever seemed to be the story of the day, the hot topic of the day. So I don't necessarily think it is that there's any intention in just painting Mexico one way, but but a lot of times when I when I hear about Mexico is really the news that I'm watching, and the news is going to carry stories that will get people's attention to get attention to to what is happening. So I can understand that you may not that I may not have heard stories like these, and so reading it here and sharing it with you, I'm sharing it with you because I think these are stories that should be told, and oftentimes. Well, I know I haven't really heard about it. So I just want to congratulate this um, group, this community for having done this for their community. Good things are happening and it's just it's just positive all over. And so we want to thank the International Organization for Migration for their work and the who are, and the produce and they're the ones that produce the storyteller. So we want to just say thanks for them to them for for what they're doing because it is important. I want to go through just to kind of, I just want to get, share a couple of facts on what is happening um, in migration at this moment. Um, so this is just a little bit of facts on what's happening with migration. So World Migration Report 2022, since 2000, IOM has been producing World Migration Reports. The World Migration Report 2022, the 11th in the World Migration Report series has been produced to contribute to an increased understanding of migration throughout the world. This new edition presents key data and information on migration as well as thematic chapters on highly topical migration issues. The interactive rep, um, this interactive represents only a small part of the report. To, and you can go to their website at worldmigrationreport.com. Sorry, worldmigrationreport.iom.int. So you can go there to, to 
get the link to see the full the full thing but i'm just going to be going through about a few of these paragraphs just to share see what share with you just a few facts about what's happening with migration right now and why the story just story we just share for us and why the story that i just shared from storyteller from the storyteller is so important so the vast majority of people continue to live in the countries in which they were born only one in 30 are migrants in most discussions on migration the starting point is usually numbers understanding changes in scale emerging trends and shifting demographics related to global school sorry global social and economic transformation such as migration help us make sense of the changing world we live in in sorry we live in and plan for the future the current global estimate is that there were around 281 million international migrants in the world in 2020 which equates to 3.6 percent of the global population overall the estimate the estimated number of international migrants has increased over the past five decades. The total estimated 281 million people living in a country other than their countries of birth in 2020 was 128 128 million more than in 1990 and over three times the estimated number in 1970. And you can see that graph. 281 million migrants that's 3.6 percent of the population and that that's data from 2020 you can see it right here when i'm moving my mouse right there okay available data reflect an overall increase in remittances in recent decades from 126 billion in 2000 to 702 billion in 2020 despite predict predictions of a large decline in international remittances due to COVID-19, 2020 saw only a slight drop, 2.4% from the 2019 global total. International remittances are are financial or in-kind transfers made by migrants directly to families or communities in their countries of origin. The World Bank complies, sorry, the World Bank compiles global data on international remittances, notwithstanding the myriad of data gaps, definitional, definitional, definitional differences, and methodological challenges in compiling accurate statistics. Its data, however, do not capture unrecorded flows through formal or informal channels, and the actual magnitude of global remittances are therefore likely to be larger than available estimates. In 2020, India, China, Mexico, the Philippines, and Egypt were, in descending order, the top five remittance remittance recipient countries, although India and China, sorry, although India and China were well above the rest, with total inward remittances exceeding $83 billion and $59 billion, respectively. And here's a graph that shows how the top 10 remittance recipients have shifted since 1995. So in 2000, also, so in 1995, it was, India was at the top, Spain was at the bottom. In 2020, India is still at the top. Oh, and back in 1995, India was 6.2. In 2020, it was 83.2. And then after India, you have China, Mexico. And the list is right here, so you can see it for yourselves. India, then China. See that movement? So that's India, see the movement for India, China, Mexico. I'm not sure what Phil is, is that Philadelphia? I'm not quite sure. So, and then you have Egypt, France, Germany. See, so that's the movement. That's the movement of it. Okay, so that's interesting information. 
that's 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 um it's important to know because um people migrate for different reasons but more often than not the underlying cause is economic reasons yes so it's good i mean when people migrate um it's it's i don't know if you've ever <laughs> lived in um in a rental property where you're moving from one place to the next and just imagine when you're moving from one community to the next within your own country how challenging tiring and frustrating that can be so just imagine those people who leave from one country to the next and i think sometimes they get such um b a bad rap but if you really really think about it and sometimes we want to close our borders on them but if you really think about it I don't think any, I certainly would not take myself up from one country to go to another country randomly. I must really be in trouble. And so I think we ought to be careful and to be thoughtful of how we treat people who are running from terror and, and um, people who feel that their own resort is to run away and escape. When, when you feel you have to escape your country of birth where you were born, that 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 cannot be easy at all there's no way that is an easy thing to do and so i think we really ought to be kinder to people who are immigrants and migrants you know we, we really ought to be kinder i believe because it could not have been an easy decision or an easy process for them to leave their homes to go somewhere else because they needed to escape you know so when someone is running because it's so hard where they're with where, where they are to get to somewhere new and then it's also another challenge and and i can imagine in the back of their minds they're thinking no matter how challenging it is where i'm going it is still better than where i'm where i am at now you know so if it, i think we can be a bit more tolerant and thoughtful thoughtful of persons we we can still um it's important to have systems in place because i also understand um persons feel um fear of being dis disenfranchised or fear of losing what opportunities they have because someone new is coming in so yes it ought to be regulated but i still think that regulation can be done with thought and kindness you know what i mean and even if we're opposing them coming in it can still be done with some thought and and humane treatment and kindness you know what i mean that's all i'm saying but thank you so much for joining me today for migration matters and it is my hope that this information was useful for you and that you um you liked it so please click the like button don't forget to subscribe if you're not yet subscribed to this channel and please share it with someone and leave your comments and i'll definitely do a shout out if you leave your comments and things like that so thank you so much for listening enjoy 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 the rest of your day <laughs>